Thank you very much. I suppose the, the first uh, and probably most important thing to say is that what you have, um, I suppose, uh, discussed this morning or what you've been introduced to this morning is a journey about voting rights that's been going on for a very long time and we are part of the 21st century conversation on voting rights. So this is something uh, that is, uh, we can trace it back hundreds of years and I have no doubt that this conversation is not over, it will change and it will evolve in the coming, uh, in the coming generations. We're in good company having this conversation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, House of Commons, the backbench motion was passed during the week, calling on the government to initiate this conversation in the, uh, in the UK. In Denmark, in Germany, in Finland, all of these conversations are, are also taking place. So this is a, a big international discussion that we are all participating in here, uh, here today. Very briefly, I want to remind you, the arguments in favour, young people have existing legal rights, and um, reducing the voting age could help alleviate some of the turnout difficulties that we are worried about. Citizens, young citizens are more informed than they've ever been because of citizenship education in school. School is a supportive environment in which young people could initiate and become involved in the voting, aging, voting process for the first time. Um, reducing the voting age would increase the representativeness of our elections and broaden the electoral base. That being said, there are important arguments that you need to keep in mind against reducing the voting age as well. The first is the public is not persuaded uh, and that is an obstacle to uh, this decision. We have serious concerns about our political system but one of the things that we have to ask ourselves is whether reducing the voting age would actually solve the concerns that we have that brought us to this point in the first place. So is this the appropriate solution uh, to the questions, to the concerns that we have about the functioning of our, uh, of our democracy? Is it possible that reducing the voting age might favour some political parties over other uh, political parties? We've heard that there are concerns that young people may not be mature enough uh, and that this is an onerous burden uh, that is being placed on them. I should be clear, physiologically, our development finishes at 14. So the, the physical formation is completed at 14. But our development, of course, as, as people um, is one that continues far beyond uh, that. And the question for you to decide is at what point that maturity uh, kicks in uh, and whether or not we would be placing an unfair burden on 17-year-olds by asking them to participate in the adult world of franchise and voting. This next point, why not 16? This is where the rest of the debate is in other European countries um, and why are we here discussing 17? Maybe we could find ourselves behind the curve. And the last thing I would say is that we have to remember that there are administrative and political barriers uh, that may actually act against or make this decision uh, more difficult. So you have arguments in favour, uh, you have arguments uh, against, uh, and uh, I wish you every success in your deliberation, and I will be available to take questions and talk to individuals uh, in the, the next hour or two. Uh, if you have any particular questions, I'd be delighted to help you. So the very best of luck. Thank you, Theresa.